Okay, so um, I have to confess, I went over just the lab, you know, the lab portion of the chapter. Okay. And just ran over that. And then I went, I only did one of the applied exercises, um, which was actually helpful for me because um, it's one where they actually, you know, hold one of the coefficients constant and then work through the problem. So it helped me understand what that meant. Um, oh, which but one other was than that? that um, it was um, number 11. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to do that backfitting one and then I ended up skipping it after all. So I see. Um, okay. But it was useful. You, you said. I found it useful because they yeah. say, you know, um, say that you wanted to do multiple linear regressions. It's a very yeah. um, simple case, right? But you can only do like simple regression with one predictor. And so I was confused as to, you know, what exactly holding one constant or, you know, keeping uh, one of the regressor or predictor, sorry, constant meant. And so um, it just means you subtract its contribution from the, you know, like the linear y is equal to um, b1x1 plus b2x2 um, plus, you know, epsilon, whatever, right? And yeah. so you would just remove it by subtracting it <clears throat> from either side and just regress on the other predictor. Uh, in a sense. And so what it showed you is that as you do that over many, many, many iterations for each of the two um, predictors, so they just had an example like beta one, beta two, or x1 and x2, um, and update, you know, the, the prediction for each at every iteration, you eventually get them to converge to almost identical like coefficient estimates as if you had run multiple linear regression. So I was like, oh, okay, well that that helps, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So remember, I was sort of confused as to whether what exactly holding one constant meant, whether you just sort of remove it and don't add its contribution. But you guys were like, no, 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 it seems like there's something else going on. So I think that that was helpful for me and also understanding, um, I think it's uh, towards the end of the chapter where we were discussing like, um, I think it was partial, uh, yeah, whatever that right. term was yeah. called. That's partial yeah. plots or something like that. Yeah, I forgot the term, but I so think I... it's figure, uh, you know, the, the one that they're regressing on wage, uh, the smooth for year right. 714. Yeah. So for me, then I was remember asking the question whether the this smooth, so middle panel in figure 714 the regression of, um, I guess it's wage on age, right? Um, yes. In terms of just using a fourth degree polynomial like they do at the very, very beginning. And, and I think I understand now um, that in this figure, you're using all of those three predictors at the same Correct. time. Correct, yeah, those are- And their contribution does, you know, so really this age on wage is, probably more likely reflects much better, right? Than just yeah. the polynomial fit. So yeah, I was like, okay, that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, I, I, I did, uh, I went through the lab as well, which I felt was a really long thing, but it was worth doing because mm -hmm. it helps solidify. I hope, I think that um, helps solidify how these things work in terms of doing them actually, right? With R, although yeah. I do find these things like I'm not super, I'm not very good with R. I'll just be honest with you. Like I'm more a Python person, so I mm -hmm. I go back and forth like I, all the time, and I get like I'm always like, wait a minute, that's I, like I'll start using equals in R, and I'll start using arrows in Python sometimes because that's how my mind has trouble context switching sometimes. But in any event, I find that when they do these labs, sometimes they just pull these things. I'm like, where'd they come up with that from? I have no idea, right? Right, so right, right. That happens, right. but it's a, it, it. It was very helpful for me to go through the the lab, and um, I thought once I got done with it, it was pretty straightforward. So I didn't really have any, you know, bring your own problems for that at all. Yeah, I'm and looking through some of like the applied um, exercises, I was just like, oh, I'm gonna skip that, skip that. Yeah, because um, yeah. I think you guys kind of sold me on just the you know uh, gams. And I was going over that tutorial that Kevin uh, put in the chat the other time, which 
really is excellent, um, I must say. So I got, I think, through the first few chapters. Me too. And it's, and it's too, just though. like super intuitive, you know what I mean? And so that also helped me understand a bit on the, um, I think they were, they had an example where they're regressing, it was some kind of auto data set, right? But they were regressing, um, I think it was a uh, highway, miles per gallon on different things, right? Like auto body length and uh, yeah. weight of the vehicle. And then um, at some point, so they use smoothing splines, I guess, in a GAM to fit two of those predictors. And then they show an example where they're also adding the type of fuel. So I think it was like diesel versus gas, right? And because those two classes, I guess, or levels, have different intercepts, right? There's definitely different like uh, fuel efficiency given diesel and or gas that can affect the response um, or in a sense, the the results of the other predictors. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's, you know, that's how um, that intercept difference, I guess, on a categorical variable can affect um, some of the results of, of how the, the other predictors get fit. So I'm sorry, that's not very helpful, but um, in terms of uh, helping me understand, I recommend it. I don't know how far you got through that. Yeah, tutorial. I got about as far as that as well. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, so it was pretty helpful for sure. I like the fact that it's interactive. You actually have to do things. It's, yes, <laughs> exactly. Just, have your eyes, you can't just like, you know, have your eyes glaze over as you're reading it or something. You really have to like, Go back wait what did he say i better make sure I know how to do that yeah yeah and i like that you know he has like baby code so that you yeah. can change a couple things <laughs> like yeah. i like that <laughs> yeah i think that for me um since i'm still learning you know r and essentially it's my first okay. coding yeah. language that's where it takes me forever sometimes i'm just like oh, yeah I mean, that's what i'm saying stuck. me too I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, because I do know Python really well, but when it comes to R, I'm like, wait, how do you do this in R? I find myself doing that all the time. I'm starting to get better and better, but it's like, yeah, hmm. you know, they're like, oh, do this. I'm like, ah, crap. I got to Google that real quick. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. No, and I also did a um, couple of the exercises, the ex the six, exercise six. Um, well, I did exercise one because I was really curious about that. Um, the conceptual exercise about conceptual, yeah. X minus C cube thing. Um, that works out pretty, that's actually pretty straightforward. I didn't really have any trouble with that. Um, just calculus. And I did exercise 6A just because I wanted to try that using cross validation. No, wait, is that that one? Yeah, using cross validation to pick the optimal degree for the polynomial. Okay. So I, did, I did do that. That was pretty straightforward just basically copied stuff in the chapter on cross validation, right? Same thing right. with uh, the other one I did, which was number 10. Yeah, number 10. Um, I basically just went back to the, you know, chapter, chapter six, oh. I guess. No, yeah, no chapter. Yeah, chapter six, I went back to chapter six and did the model selection, right? Um, I just followed oh. through the, what they did in the lab. I mean, just basically the mm -hmm. same exact thing. And so I did the cross validation for that. You don't ha you don't have to. I looked online for this. You can find solutions online. I looked yeah, online yeah. and the people that did it online, they they did it by using just like one of the they did the you know the adjusted R squared and the Bayesian information criteria. I did the cross validation, oh. so it was a little bit more complicated, but on the other hand, I just kind of cut and paste the code <laughs> from chapter. Right, six. right, right, right. Oh, I see. Okay. So that was pretty that's a pretty interesting exercise, I thought. I highlighted it which means i probably was interested in doing it um it just didn't yeah get to and it, i but... you know, i had to say i did the same thing i also highlighted number 11 but i didn't get to it and i don't think i will but um i do think it is interesting so maybe i'll try it if i get a free chance i might try to get it since you called it out as being interesting yeah maybe i'll, I'll go back to this 10 because it seems like it forces you to review several things which yes I that's what, that's yeah. really that's true it really did I mean, it's like, oh, four step point. You just did that. How come I can go back and look how it works? You know? Yeah. In fact, didn't I do? I think, yeah, I did that. I led that one too, right? So I should be like really fresh in my brain, but it's not. <laughs> it's funny how, like, uh, you know, and, and maybe this is just because I've been in the field, you know, but for molecular biology, things just stick, even like, you know, gene names and things I, I just remember. But for this coding thing, I'm just like, why don't I remember, you know, something that I just did like last yeah. week? So I think it's it, repetition, repetition, repetition. Like you've been doing, yeah. you know, 
Yeah. Molecular biology stuff for a long time now. So <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I had a question. So in the lab, you know, the actual lab tutorial. Yeah. We had something where you can set a CV parameter, so cross validation parameter, to true or something like that. Where's um, that at? Now I'm forgetting. Cross validation parameter. Yeah. Where is it? Hold on one second. And I was wondering, like, what is that about? And is it is there just a way of quickly doing, you know, like an automated way of doing cross validation? Um, well, I must have missed that. Huh? It might have been for a very specific. Let me see. Fine. It might have been one of those things that they sneak in there. You're like, wait a minute, where do you get that from, right? But I like to yeah, see that. Yeah. Okay. Concept. So, where is this? Um, Okay, so in the um, markdown file for chapter seven, nonlinear yeah. lab, I have it at line uh, 286. For you, it might be different. I don't know. I don't, I I'm, have I'm only looking this. at, oh, you, I'm sorry. What markdown file are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. For, for the labs, there are yeah. markdown files. So the actual lab tutorials. So I sometimes me? just work off of them. Oh, yeah. man, I've been typing all these things in like crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> Sometimes cut and paste them out of the PDF because I'm tired of typing, but I realize you can just download a markdown. What, what section is it? Is it what yeah, is it about? Yeah, if you go. I, maybe I'll find oh, it in the book. Sorry, what was that? What section uh, of the lab is it, though? What are, they, what are they doing in that section? Yeah, let me. Or just let give me a link. Let me find again. it. It's uh, fitting the BS function. What is the BS function? Um, That's the spline. Function BS has a degree argument. Yeah, I think it's smoothing splines. So. Let me look for it in the. How do I find the markdown? Maybe I should hunt for that. Just look for the book. If page. you go to the website for the book, uh, there should be a, like a materials. How did I miss this? I've missed stuff all over the place. Um, since it's Resources? my like, online course. I think so. Yeah. There's online course. I see that. It doesn't have anything. Yeah, it might be resources or second edition resources. Ah, oh, here we go. Markdown files. Well, what do you know? Look at that. <laughs> and sometimes the slides are also useful because um, they contain a lot more information than just the, like even additional to the chapter. What's this thing called? It's not something called exactly why it's called. No, it's not. All right, give me one second just to put it in my Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm still, I'm still looking for the thing, so. Dropbox. Documents. Sorry, I'm talking to myself because that's. <laughs> that's totally fine. Here we go. Save. No. Yeah, so, so what line was it in the markdown? Okay, so it's uh, actually, if you go to page 317. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, on the markdown, it's line 286. But in the book, it's page 317, uh, very bottom. 317 bottom, okay. Yeah. Oh, CV equals true. Yeah. So, so I think that is, so you can say, okay, I want um, DF equals 16. That gives you a certain amount of degrees of freedom. I think CV equals true actually f automatically will find um, the best number of degrees of freedom through cross validation. Right. And, and I, I'm just wondering like how it does this cross validation. And is there something it says like okay so in the, so you know I do the question mark smooth that spline you get it, the uh, help file for the thing and it yeah, says yeah. It, I should look it ordinary leave one no I'm just telling you what I'm doing ordinary it does ordinary leave one out cross validation when fall wait oh okay wait when falls let me see 
It is used for smoothly parameter computation only when both SPAR and DF are not specified. It is used however, to determine CV.crit in the result. Setting it to NA for speed up skips the evaluation of leverages of any score. Okay, ordinary leave one out when it's true or generalized cross validation when false. So that's what okay. that does. What's generalized cross validation? No idea. Can you look that up? Yeah, I don't know. I would assume it's K fold maybe, but generalized. Yeah, there'd be a K. There's no K requirement. True, true. Generalized. Generalized cross validation is one of the most important approaches used. To estimate. That's why I just found that from Google. Like, okay, I never <laughs> wish I knew what that was. I see. Yeah. I'm not finding a good site to quickly explain what generalized cross validation is, but but when you have said it to true, it does leave one out, which we do know what that is. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, but this well, is there's only... something new about this. Um... Yeah, I'm like, is there a way to just do cross validation on a data set that is as simple as that? Like just setting it to true and then specifying the type of cross validation. That well, you almost. Need? I mean, remember in the Probably. GLM model, there's a there's a cross validation thing built in. We use that in chapter six, or chapter we use in chapter five. But we definitely did use that. GLM does cross validation for you automatically. Nice. Okay. Okay. I, it's it probably because I didn't actually get to that lab. So. Yeah. I don't well, know. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, in exercise six, when I did that, it's just a few lines. What I do is, oh, let me just go from. Well, no, it's not. I shouldn't say it's automatic, but you can just go cv.glm and then put your fit in, and it'll tell. It'll do like, yeah, I'll do the cross validation for you. It won't find the best one, but it'll do it for you. So you can just go through like whatever fifteen things you want to try and plot it and pick the best one or whatever. Uh, do you have the like, your code for that, Ron? What? Do you have your code for that? Would you mind sharing your screen so I can see that? How it looks? Yeah, like no, I'll show you. It's for, I mean, it's so okay. short. And you said that's exercise six, right? Yeah. All right. Maybe I should try. Let's figure out which one of these is. The, I have so many things open in my window. Is that it? Is that it? Where is it? <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> I got too many windows open. Let's do the whole screen. I'll probably give you cause a problem, but all right, can you see my screen now? I cannot. Wait, sorry. I'm not even on Zoom. Yeah, I can see it. It's probably really small, but oops, that made it worse. Oh nice. Okay. Okay. Why did that work? It's weird. Oh, I see. CVGLM got it. Yeah, it's just this section right here. So that's that's my exercise six. The the plot disappeared for some reason when I zoomed in, but um great. But it was it ends up with a plot of the errors and four was the one I picked. The higher terms seemed like they didn't really have much effect. Which is similar from the animal stuff in the lab, so I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay. That's you can see, yeah. Useful. Yeah, you just compute CV. Um, remember, remember, you remember we returned this, you know, this delta um, attribute for it had like two things from two different ways of calculating the error, but you just picked the, the first one. But there's some reason the second one did some bias that. correction. Oh, huh? Okay. But and yeah, it's you in, said that we did this in chapter six, right? So. Yeah, chapter five, maybe actually, maybe chapter five. Oh uh, yeah. Cross validation. Chapter. Yes, which is the chapter that I did, and I don't remember. Okay. See, <laughs> it happens to you too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can make that plot show because it's gonna drive me crazy if I don't. Cool. Okay. Where is it? It's all lab stuff. Yeah, maybe this will work now. Yeah, so there's the errors, and I just oh look at four. It's just you know, well, early mm. at three, I guess it's probably now. This I I didn't set the seed, so right. I pick four. Maybe even three is good now. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. Nice. That's interesting. If I run it again, do I get another different answer? Actually, I thought, yeah, no, well, because Katie was there. Ooh. There, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go, four, yeah. No. <laughs> so there's enough, I guess you should, anyway. Um, yeah. So this kind of cross validation stuff was built in for that, but for the next mm -hmm. exercise 10, it wasn't, there's nothing. And I had to do the whole crazy, um, yeah, where is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, which doesn't look as bad. Well, that's just, I just copied the function they defined in chapter six for calculating the, doing the prediction. Uh huh. And then this is the cross validation that I haven't done quite manually. Yes, yes. So if you, if you haven't done that lab piece, it's definitely worth going back and looking at because apparently it comes up again. <laughs> uh, in chapter six, let yeah, I probably should. Yeah. Um, I may just or at least run through it on read. the R. You can download the R markdown. You can at least go through it. It's worth doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize you could do that. I... Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I read off of the book and sometimes I just actually go through these examples and run them because, um, you know, the, the book just has everything. Yeah. Yeah. Package of chemo required. required. What is that? I think it was for visualizing a 2D surface. Oh, I um, skipped that part of the lab, actually. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm like, eh. I forget what it was. <laughs> what was that? It was a, a 2D surface for something. Um, it's for the um, interactions and in the general. The general interactions. Model. Yeah. Yes. Scan model interactions. Yeah. That was cool. So yeah, that's basically what I did. I don't know. And you're doing the next chapter, right? Which is, um, what is it? Tree-based methods. Tree-based. Yeah. Okay, I'm really interested. I actually have no, I mean, I started reading that chapter, but I really don't know. I've never used it, never seen it. So it's all going to be new to me. Yeah, I was sort of wondering, because you know, like uh, the actual output looks like uh, hierarchical clustering. But I'm like, but I think it's different in some way um, because we are doing hierarchical clustering later as uh, whatever, unsupervised, unsupervised methods. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, hopefully it should be good. Um, if it's a short chapter um, and we still have lab questions maybe from past labs, would that be cool to go over? Yeah, I don't okay. see why not. Yeah, because now I feel like I'm so behind and now I can never ask questions on past chapters. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no, oh, no, I'm missing out. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, I mean, I have asked and, and even in other book clubs too, questions in the Slack. Sometimes people jump in, sometimes they don't. But <laughs> That's true. That's true, yeah. Like I'm also doing the Bayes Rules uh, book. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm leading that one. And like, I, I'm like, oh, here are some questions I had. You know, people like nothing, crickets. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Moving on. Either Ooh, nobody... you and Kevin are very thorough, which is really, really great. Thorough? What do you mean? Thorough in that you really get deep into the into the things, right? Like into like the math and the concepts. Oh, and so for me, yeah. it's actually really helpful. I'm interested in those things. That's why. Yeah. Um, I I want to go over Kevin's uh, post also on uh, the whatever they were called, partial things, um, partial regressions. Okay. Oh yeah, partial regression plot, yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty much straightforward what you just said though. It's just like, take the residuals, right? Or you, you fit all of them, but you're just fitting, you're only plotting the effective for the one variable, right? Mm-hmm. Mm yeah, actually, I started saying, I'm like, wait a minute, what exactly does that mean, though? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, you hold the other predictors constant at their mean, for example, or something. Right. Right, 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 right. yeah. Or zero or whatever, depending on how you do it. But they do, when I say that, I have to say it because, like, I'm not, it's not like I'm fitting them with the constant, I fit them with the predictors put you know changing but then you're looking at only the effect of that one predictor which is exactly what you want to know about right you're like what is it what is happens if i hold you know the the teacher salary constant and increase the amount of money i spend on books or whatever right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this model and that's what that'll tell you 
even though you, yeah. in reality you can't do that. Right. 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 Yeah, that's a good point. There's a lot of great stuff on on Wikipedia. <laughs> it's gotten a lot better over yeah, the years. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes the Wikipedia on especially statistics is so like um, because I've read through several of them, it gets so deep into the map so quickly that sometimes yes. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not getting a whole lot out of this unless you already know, you know, like the math and are familiar with notation and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's true. I agree with you there. Sometimes like, eh, I don't know. I didn't really want to start with, you know, eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this <laughs> or whatever right. it is. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I just looked up generalized cross validation. Like, eh, I don't see. <laughs> I just want to know what it is. So it's, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then I've also been on like uh, whatever is that cross validated like stack exchange thing. And then it just gets into like people using either different terminologies or very, very wordy. And I'm like, well, just get to the point. Yeah. But sometimes it's hard, you know, um, to get to the point either without the math or or something like that, because it's, it's definitely not like a simple, straightforward thing. Um, OK, so I mean, that's all that I got, Ron. I'm sorry I didn't get through more of the lab. Same, um, yeah. Yeah, but same. if we have questions and uh maybe kevin has some questions for this chapter two for for next week um it looks like this tree-based methods it's short but then you never know it could have a, a ton of things and you know a short amount of pages so um i hope it's short I could use a little relief this last couple of chapters have been quite trudgy <laughs> yeah 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 this is true um, yeah all right well thanks sandra yeah, we'll no problem. Thank next you for, time. for being here. Yeah. I'll see you next time. Okay. All bye. right. Bye.